Welcome back to the Church of Obelisk. Today we're going to take a look at the mid-roll in patch 728b. So I'm going to bring you a tier list. What are the best heroes, what are the worst heroes currently to play in the mid lane role. This list is primarily based on pub play and we're in particular going to look at uh, high level pubs because just the higher up you go in level, the more important balance becomes. At lower levels you can play anything. But... Uh, that said, we're still going to look at all the skill levels to some extent, but mostly it's going to be focused on higher level play. So this list is uh, based on objective stats taken from uh, Dota Plus stats, uh, taken from Dota 2 Pro Tracker, which uh, tracks the highest MMR pub games, and also looking at uh, Dota buff stats on uh, different uh, skill levels. And also, it's also based to some extent on my own opinion. So, for example, if you take a look at Visage, he's a hero that, if you look at the objective stats, is not that great. Uh, would probably be somewhere in C tier, but I personally think, uh, from my own experience in game, from my own feeling, I would put him in S tier. So I'm compromised here and put him in A tier here. Uh, so it's a mix of my own opinion and objective stats. And I sorted all the heroes into five tiers. So S tier is the broken heroes, the heroes that are just overpowered. A tier is the heroes that are um, maybe slightly too strong, a bit above average, but not uh, crazy broken. Uh, the B tier is sort of the solid heroes that uh, are neither too strong nor too weak, they're just fine. C tier is heroes that um, are a bit below par, but uh, can be quite good in certain situations. And then D tier is the heroes that you just never pick in mid lane, they're just not that strong. Right, let's get started with the list. First is Lycan. Lycan is absolutely broken ever since 728 came out. He has been nerfed a little bit, but still his win rate is very high, 54.5%. In the lower tiers, he tends to have a somewhat lower win rate. This is because Lycan is a hero that uh, benefits a lot from short, aggressive games, which you typically get at uh, higher levels. In lower level play, people just sort of do their own thing, they just uh, want to go along to get along, they're just farming a bit here and there, they don't really have much purpose in the game, whereas Lycan is a very timing based hero, he's a hero that wants to ideally end the game in the mid game, or at least take control of the map and allow your true carry in the safe lane to get his farm while you control the map. But if your team just doesn't want to play this sort of focused objective based dota it can be quite hard to succeed with lycan this is why he does better at higher levels so if you're uh, somewhere in these uh, lower skill brackets uh, lycan is maybe not the best choice but uh, you know anything here above uh, archon lycan is currently overpowered enough to just pick him there so he's a very very powerful hero definitely want to to pick up if you want to win Lycan is also very strong in the safe lane and off lane role, but personally I think he's strongest in the mid lane, and this is after all a mid lane tier list. Then we have Puck, who's a very powerful, versatile hero, and another high tempo hero, but a bit of a different sort than Lycan, whereas Lycan plays a very objective based Dota. Puck is very flexible, he can move around the map quickly, he can do ganks. Uh, he also actually scales um, fairly well. He has a very powerful shard and he's just a hero that you can build as a right click, you can build him more as a utility hero. He's a very powerful hero and his win rate is um, good across uh, all the brackets pretty much, not in Herald, but he's kind of a hard hero and uh, at the highest level he has a very high win rate. We'll take a look at here at Dota 2 Pro Tracker. He is the fourth highest uh, picked hero in 7k plus games. And has a very very impressive win rate for that so basically the higher up you go the higher his win rate is but his win rate is uh, pretty good in almost all the tiers next we have bat rider who has a pretty solid win rate here in divine at lower levels he falls off very fast but basically anything below divine is not that great and if you look at the pro tracker he is very highly picked and has an excellent win rate as well so that's why he's at the top of A tier here. The reason Batrider has a low win rate in uh, low MMR games 
is the same as for Lycan. It's just a hero that peaks quite early. You need to be very aggressive with him. And if you don't feel this tremendous sense of urgency to do something, to convert your early strength into objectives, into kills, then you're just going to fall off. And eventually, if you go so long game, you have a bad rider as a mid, mid laner. It's not going to go well for you. Next, we have Storm, a very solid hero. He's not the strongest laner. There's some uh, matchups where he really struggles. He's quite good against the melee heroes in general, though. So uh, he's obviously a very mobile hero. If your enemy team lacks this able, Storm Spirit is uh, very powerful. And his winner is just like solid across um, most of these brackets. And uh, really, his uh, strength comes in these uh, high MMR games where he has a 53% win rate, which is very solid, with a pretty high pick rate, so that's why he's uh, up here. The same can be said for TA, she's also a very strong hero, good uh, win rates in higher levels, and uh, unlike Storm, she's a very strong laner. She also has a very nice uh, uh, Aghanim shot here that uh, was buffed tremendously recently. So she's quite um, powerful. Uh, she's not that good in the like, very late game, but she does scale uh, quite well by mid laner standards. Same for Storm. Then we have Vistage, who's currently my favorite hero, but his win rates are not that uh, great. In some of these brackets, they're quite good, in others, it's a bit more like average. Uh, you can see him in Divine, it's 52%. But if you look over to Dota 2 Pro Tracker, uh, Vistage is uh, nothing special. I see his win rate is exactly 50%, and it's played not that often. So, based on those stats, he would uh, belong more in like uh, B tier, but I'm putting him in A tier here because I just feel this hero is uh, very, very powerful. I have a lot of success with him, and the main reason is just that you can now last hit properly. Then, you also have access to this uh, quite powerful Aghanim Scepter which I feel is a bit overrated. You don't always need Aghanim Scepter, and it's not an item. You, I think in most games you don't want to actually rush this, but it's still a very powerful option, and definitely much more powerful than the old Aghanims, which just gave you one extra bird. So this is a very potent weapon, and there's just so many different item builds you can go for on Visage, and if you know how to play this hero, I think he's uh, one of the strongest heroes in the current patch. Then we have Pagna, a hero whose win rates here are not uh, anything special, it's at around 50%. But uh, um, if you look from here, Pagna actually does uh, really well, 53% win rate. And um, a very strong mid laner, so he's an A tier here. Another one of these rather aggressive heroes that tend to fall off later on and that need to get early objectives. And then we have Ayo, who's kind of a weird choice to include here. He's not uh, a typical mid laner, but he is actually played in mid lane a decent amount. So if you look here, uh, Ayo actually played in mid 18% uh, of the time and with an enormously high win rate. So because he's not played that often mid, I'm not putting him higher than 8 tier, but. Uh, He's definitely very, very solid. The idea with mid IO is you rush Dominator, then you get Soul Ring for mana because you have already enough uh, HP reach with Dominator, and this also gives uh, unlimited mana to your Dominator creep. And then you go for the Agonims, and after that, it's very flexible. You might uh, go for something like uh, E Blade, uh, you often you see. Tarask, uh, you might see something like Kaya and Sanj, a lot of different uh, follow-up items, but the idea is just you can farm really fast with this and the Aghanims is uh, very powerful obviously. Then we have another unusual mid laner, Tide Hunter, is typically an off laner, of course that's his primary role, but he's also just fine in the mid lane. He's currently one of the strongest off laners in the patch, but uh, he actually scales reasonably well. So if you go play him as a mid laner, you uh, typically uh, want to buy the Aghanims and as well as the Aghanim Shard. The Aghanim Shard is really powerful, gives a good bunch of bonus damage and uh, cooldown reduction is great on a 4 second cooldown spell. 1 second cooldown reduction is a big deal. 
and most importantly it affects buildings which means you do a tremendous amount of damage to buildings and you also decrease their attack damage which must easier to push towers also if they cliff that the tower from the tower damage is going to be reduced by a lot so this hero hits some very powerful mid game timings so you want to go for items like face boots is typically boots of choice you can also go treads but face boots typically is best then you maybe want to go something like a vlad vlad helps you a lot for your sustain and for your team fighting actually having lifesteal is really great on thailand because it works with anchor smash and then you probably want to go agnims and the shard and after that uh, you can go also some utility items the typical off lane title of the items like a pipe or something like that or like a heaven's helmet or you can go into more uh, damage items like uh, desolator for example you can go for something like an ac is a great uh, item later on also uh, something like satanic would be great as i said lifesteal very powerful in tight hunter and the fact that the uh, satanic lost the status reduction is not as uh, relevant on Titan because you have uh, Kraken Shell, which is uh, basically a much better version of uh, status resistance. So um, you can go for that, or you can also uh, just go for the Omega damage and uh, just uh, go ahead and uh, get a Daedalus, as well as, of course, you have in the late game the 200 damage talent. So it's a hero that actually scales uh, quite, quite well. But of course his primary strength lies in the mid game he's just a very strong pushing and team fighting hero and really more of a counter initiator than initiator although of course you can buy a blink dagger it's a perfectly good item but don't rush it now we have razor kind of unusual choice here as razor is a hero that's not picked very often but actually if you look at his win rates they're actually really great in all these brackets especially higher brackets he has great win rates and if you look at Dota 2 Pro Tracker, he's actually the highest win rate hero in the meta here. So you see his 62.4% win rate. However, it's only 133 games. So that's why I'm not putting him in S tier. Uh, that's why I'm sort of cautiously putting him in here in, in A tier. But uh, he's definitely has a lot of potential and I think is a bit underrated right now. And the item build, not much has really changed for Razor. You want to go for either face boots or treads both are fine then you want some sort of ability item uh, so that usually means a yules or a drum and after that usually it's just uh, going to bkb because bkb is such an important item on razor so he's a very high tempo hero he doesn't farm as fast as the old razor does but uh, he's just a very powerful fighting hero and can dominate uh, most lanes so he is surprisingly strong Next we have Invoker, who after a couple of uh, very nice buffs is actually a pretty solid win rate hero, around 50% in most of these brackets. And then on the 2 Pro Tracker, he has a solid win rate as well with a high pick rate, which is why I'm just putting him here on the bottom of, uh, of A tier. He's just a very solid, strong hero, and if you can play him well, you're going to succeed. So usually Invoker, even in patches where he's overpowered, doesn't have that great of a win rate just because he's one of the hardest heroes to play and a lot of people sort of overestimate their ability of playing Invoker. There's a hero that always has uh, you know, a worse win rate than he actually is in terms of his, his uh, objective strength. So if he's at around 50%, uh, he's probably above average, which is why he's in A tier. And then we have uh, the Wind Ranger, Slack's favorite hero who is just a very solid mid laner. You can also play her in other positions like uh, POS4, for example, or offlane. But, you know, she's just solid. She does a lot of single target damage. She's quite slippery, has high kill potential, is uh, pretty mobile. She's just a solid mid laner. Nothing really special about her, but she's just like slightly above the curve. So my advice to you if you're a mid lane player is just pick two or three of the heroes in the S and A list and just spam those that is the most efficient way of getting better that's also the most efficient way of gaining mmr just don't spread your hero pool too thin concentrate on learning like two or three heroes properly 
But if none of these heroes appeal to you, there's also the heroes here in the B list. So we're going to go through these a little bit quicker. We have Ember Spirit, who's just uh, very solid. He's sort of almost in A tier, kind of on the edge. Uh, depends a bit on which skill we're looking at. So the lower we go, the lower his, uh, his win rate is. So in all these brackets, he doesn't do all that well, but uh, at the highest level on Dota 2 uh, Bro Tracker, his win rate is uh, fairly good, which is why he's at the top of B tier here. Lashrock is a very solid hero who makes him to B tier. Same can be said for Queen of Pain. She actually is a surprisingly hard hero to play, also a very aggressive hero, so in uh, these brackets, she doesn't actually do that well, but if you look at uh, at uh, Pro Tracker, we can see that uh, she does uh, quite well, and that's why she's in B tier. And also, of course, very importantly, the fact that she's picked a lot. If you have these kind of win rates with uh, high pick rates, uh, you're looking at a very solid hero and one that definitely belongs into B tier. And then we have Pangolin the Pangolin, who is primarily an off lane, but also played uh, quite frequently in the mid lane, and he's just overall solid, nothing special about him, he belongs in B tier. Morphling, a bit of a situational mid laner, but he can definitely do quite well in the mid lane as well. He's uh, quite hard here to play, so generally doesn't do all that well in lower tiers, but uh, does well in high tier games. Void Spirit, uh, similar to Ember Spirit, just a very solid, uh, high tempo mobile hero that can control the game. Arc Warden, very powerful late game farming hero. So generally these uh, hyper carry mid laners are not really that strong in this particular meta. But um, the Arc Warden as well as Alchemist are kind of an exception. They are strong enough to survive even this meta. So Arc Warden kind of struggles against these zoo heroes like gets overrun by heroes like Lycan or Beastmaster. But uh, He's uh, strong enough, especially with the buffs to Mjolnir and Maelstrom, as well as the introduction of uh, Gleipnir, which is an uh, interesting alternative to, to Mjolnir. Uh, the hero is just very powerful right now. So despite not really fitting into the meta all that well, he still manages to get his way into B tier. Then we have Alchemist, who got some very nice buffs, uh, especially his uh, late game sort of scaling potential with the improvement of the scepter buff is a very big deal so even once you six slotted you can still get a lot of value to your team so that makes uh, alchemist uh, strong enough to put in the b tier the uh, problem is just his, his laning stage is quite weak and uh, usually these days a bit better as a carry but you can also blame the mid lane Death Prophet, uh, solid mid-game pushing type of hero. If you need that in your lineup, uh, go for her. Ricky, more of a carry hero. Very strong in the carry role, role right now, but can also play as, an, as a mid laner, but nothing special about him, so he's in B tier. Magnus, uh, pretty much can only be played in the mid lane these days. In all other roles, he is, his win rate is quite low, but in mid lane is decent, so he's in B tier. Tinker is uh, a hero that actually has uh, pretty decent win rates right now. So he's in B tier. Troll Warlord, uh, more of a carry hero, but uh, does decently well in mid lane. Monkey King, the same thing. Very strong carry hero. S tier or at least high A tier carry hero. But in mid lane, I think he's just uh, sort of average. If he has a good matchup, he's great. If not, it's uh, very subpar. OD was for a long time one of the worst heroes in dota but then he's received some very massive buffs and now he's just seems to be around balanced so he's in b tier here lena is just fine as a mid laner nothing special about her but she's solid she's always a good laner doesn't really have any bad lane matchups uh, but uh, her scaling potential is a bit lackluster and like once you fall behind this lena as a mid laner it can be hard to catch up Mirana is primarily a position 4, but uh, with her new shard ability, which is uh, very powerful for a core, but not that great for post 4 Mirana, she can actually be played as a core, but she's nothing special, so she's here at the bottom of B tier. Now we get to the situational heroes in C tier. Lynx, 
he's all right but after the nerfs received uh, he's no longer anything particularly strong there was a slight error in the tier list you've been looking at so far hoodwing is here in c tier not in uh, b tier um so that's where she belongs uh so sorry if that caused any confusion so Hood hoodwink is kind of similar to wind ranger but after the nerfs that she received she's kind of like a worse version of wind ranger uh, just just pick wind ranger instead if you want to blow hoodwink Broodmother is pretty much the quintessential situational hero. She can be very strong in particular games, but uh, if she's countered, she's kind of lackluster. After all the nerfs she received, she's no longer the powerhouse that can just ignore counters. So if you have last pick and it's a good Broodmother game and you're a good Broodmother player, go for it. But uh, it's probably not a hero that's worth uh, learning right now if, you ha if you're not familiar with her. Then we have Lone Druid, who I didn't think he was that bad, but honestly looking at his win rates, it's not pretty. Like he has some good win rates, but overall it's pretty subpar. If we look uh, here under the Pro Tracker, Lone Druid is just basically never played, his win rate is very low. So I couldn't really justify putting him any higher than this. But um, based on my personal feeling, I think he put, puts, belongs more somewhere like in this range. Um, but one problem that Lone Druid of course has is that uh, many of his uh, favorite items were nerfed. So Lone Druid uh, really liked to buy MKB, but that item was nerfed a lot. Desolate was also slightly nerfed. Then it introduced Orb of Corrosion, which is of course a great item on Lone Druid. And the thing is just it's also a great item on lots of other heroes. And for most other heroes, uh, this item actually does more. Because the big thing about Over Corrosion is that it allows you to combine Over Venom and Blightstone in one item, which is great for so many melee heroes. And it's also great for Lone but not as important because you tend to have just have more slots available. The fact that you combine these items in one item is not as big of a deal on Lone Druid. Uh, especially now that Over Corrosion no longer stacks with Over Venom. So Lone Druid right now, I guess it's kind of mediocre, which is why I'm putting him here in the C tier. Earth Spirit, one of those heroes that, of course, is not a typical mid laner. Typically, of course, played as a POS 4 and has quite good win rate there. But you can also situationally be played as a mid laner. And it's primarily enabled by this uh, great new shard. Gives the extra four charges and four a ground vision around your stone remnants. And that is such a great upgrade for Earth Spirit. It means you almost never run out of uh, remnants. However, for a post four Earth Spirit, it's quite hard to afford. But as a mid laner, it's, it's very easy to afford. So this makes him much stronger as a core. And he's just a very high tempo core. Uh, kind of plays in a lot of ways uh, similar to the other spirits but just a little bit more aggressive and less solid than an Ember Spirit or a Void Spirit. Meepo is similar to Broodmother, great if you have a free game and you can play the hero well, but on the whole he's not that strong, so he's in C tier. Earthshaker is kind of a situational counter pick in mid, in particular matchups he does well. So if you're playing some sort of a draft game, if you're playing Battle Cup for example, or sort of competitive game, uh, it's often quite nice to be able to just pick Earthshaker early on, you can play him as a 4, or then in particular cases you can also just shove him into mid and uh, pick a support later. But it's very situational, in a lot of matchups it's just uh, completely useless. Tiny is an okay mid laner, high tempo hero, but nothing great about him. Zeus, after receiving a couple of nerfs, his win rates are not looking that great. That's why it's only C tier. It's actually surprised me. I thought he was a bit better, but just looking at the win rates, I can't justify putting him any higher. Timbersaw is a great hero, but not that great in the mid lane right now, so I'm just putting him in C tier. Dragon Knight, kind of very underwhelming as a mid laner. His win rates are not great. So just don't pick this hero as a mid laner. He's actually doing better in the offlane than in the mid lane. Um, but yeah, just kind of underwhelming hero. Asuka, not that strong right now. He just doesn't, doesn't have the strength that he used to have. 
Uh, he's still kind of a GZ hero, but it's just hard to actually end games early with Husker. Mars, primary and offlaner. Occasionally can blend mid lane, but nothing special about him there. Little Fiend just kind of has a uh, fairly low win rates. Uh, it's definitely one of the most overpicked heroes in the game. Uh, so just stop picking this hero, please. Viper is not that great in terms of win rates. He's not terrible. He can make decent use of the new Glepnir item. Because the uh, Rod of Aethos is a great item in the early game. Then you have a late game upgrade for that. In later on the transition to right clicking. Um, but just his win rates are not that great. So he's just down here. It is profit. Uh, mid is not the best role for, for NP and he's very hard to play. So even though it has quite low win rate, that doesn't necessarily mean that hero is bad. It's just he's hard to play. But people overestimate the ability on Nidus Prophet. So he's not a terrible hero, but uh, very situational. Skyrath Mage, it's uh, like a very aggressive, cheesy kind of mid hero. I can do well in particular games, but uh, nothing particularly good about him. And then finally, it's the heroes that uh, just uh, are very, very bad. Necro, he just doesn't do enough. In no one else is actually okay, but the higher you go, the lower his win rate tends to get. And in Dota Pro Tracker, his win rate is even worse. So if you're in lower levels, it's actually fine to pick him. But I'm looking primarily at more like high MMR pubs, and in those games, he's quite bad. Same thing goes for Sniper. His win rate is just fine in low MMR, but uh, the higher you go, the lower it gets. And yeah, it's just not a good hero if uh, you're playing as people who know what they're doing. Gyrocopter is not that great as a mid laner and just generally not that strong of a hero right now. Punka actually surprised me that uh, he's this bad, but his win rates are just consistently bad across all the brackets. And all skill brackets is always somewhere around like 45%. There's no bracket, no skill level where Kunka actually does well. So just don't play this hero. Uh, you're just giving yourself a hard time, just pick other heroes instead. He's, he's very solid, basically, but he's like just, just solidly, consistently below average. There's no... I don't really see like any sort of situation where I'm excited to pick Kunkka. So just don't, don't, don't play this hero right now. You need some buffs. Snapfire is a hero that I think can do uh, quite well in like organized games as a mid laner. But uh, I just in the, in the pubs, the whole reason to pick as a mid is to get this Aghanims fast. But this actually requires good coordination. So unless you like playing with some friends and you've practiced these particular snapfire combinations, I wouldn't recommend playing her as a mid laner. And the win rate overall is just uh, rather low. So yeah, just uh, stay away from her. Unless you have like a very specific plan with her. Medusa is a bit too slow for the current meta, she just gets overrun and generally these carry mids are not that great. Bristleback uh, is fine in lower tiers, but uh, in higher levels he just gets progressively worse. And then Silencer, just like don't pick this hero as a mid laner, just don't do it, he's fine as a 5, he has a great ultimate, but um, he just needs too many items to really scale as as a core because he's very squishy he has low mobility and then he also kind of wants to have like int and attack speed and so we just have to optimize for too much and he also farms rather slowly so just to stay away from this hero as a core take him as a five he's fine as a five but um as a mid laner just don't do it all right that has been my tier list for um, mid heroes let me know if you have any disagreements, any hero you think I rated uh, way too highly or way too uh, low. And uh, also let me know in the comment section uh, what uh, tier list you want me to make next or what other heroes you want me to look at in a more detailed video. And as always, uh, I'm streaming on uh, Monday and Friday, streaming Dota as well as analyzing your replay. So you can just come to my stream at uh, twitch.tv stroke Gunnarsson. And then I will analyze one of your replays for free. Just post your replay in the chat. And I'm also going to play some games. Uh, playing mostly mid at the moment. And playing mostly 
uh, Visage and Lycan. Also come to my stream on Sunday where I stream other games, casual Sunday stream, and hopefully I'll see you somewhere there.